I'm Jake. And I'm Allie. And today we're going to be doing a reaction to a cinema snob review of a anti-abortion theme movie. And as of filming this, we're one day after the overturning of Roe v. Wade, so you can't say we're not topical. <laughs> and uh, have you ever seen an anti-abortion movie before? I haven't, and I'm terrified. <laughs> I have uh, sort of watched one. Mm -hmm. Brad's reviewed many abortion films made by the anti-abortion crowd, and normally I'd say start in order, but we ain't got the time. <laughs> so we're gonna get into this, and since we're doing Roe v. Wade, the 2021 film that was made by Nick Loeb, I'm gonna need a uh, little shot. Mm -hmm. So, uh... Keep in mind, he's drinking for the both of us, so... <laughs> yeah, you're the designated, um... Driver. Reactor. Reactor! I love that. So, uh... I make sure he stays alive. <laughs> here's to it. Oh! I know that burns. Woo! <laughs> Damn! <laughs> Fun fact, before I hit play... Yeah? I sort of appear at the beginning of this video. Stop! Yeah, um, we see Brad highlights his Twitter, mm -hmm. scrolls down it, Yeah. and one of the tweets you see up here is mine, because he retweeted me at the time. Oh, God. I have a famous cousin. <laughs> so, uh, pay attention to the bottom. You got it. Here we go. Are you on Twitter? Get up to the minute notices on new videos, site news, and more. There I am. I saw you! <laughs> of course, if it's silliness you want to, then you should also follow the most Lloyd approved account on Twitter at Lloyd Approved. Because of course that's what he it's He gave called. his cat a Twitter account. Oh, I love that. I guess this movie finally came out. Uh, it seems like only yesterday we were told legendary stories of a test screen. He got a screener for it a year in advance. Huh. John Voight Supreme Court and Jamie Kennedy abortion experiments. And I hope that it's no coincidence that Wait, Logan I didn't know Wade they were in it. On the yeah. Same week as Godzilla versus wow, they really Fallen are just trying to get that paycheck. I just need a versus movie. I don't care which. Now, in fairness, Godzilla vs. Kong also features people creatures in Earth's hollow belly. Oh, it's so close. You really should have released this on April Fools. The <laughs> movie is a dream project for the film's co-director, co-writer, and star Nick Loeb, who has acted before in movies like Dead of Thieves, and is also the descendant of a banking family which helped start the Lehman Brothers firm. Yeah, look, hmm. if I was limited with that much money, I would probably make crazy movies too. For the last You're rich, oh, got time on your hands, why not? Seriously. What wouldn't you do? Corbin Burnson, and yeah, I'm gonna stop there. Everyone that you think is in this movie is in this movie. Yeah. The plot can basically be described as what if breast men were about abortion? And Lone mm. Stars as gynecologist Bernard Nathanson, founder of an abortion rights organization, then turned anti abortion activist. Really, the movie can be summed up like this. Bro, we need to make some money, bro. Bro, I got it. Abortions. <laughs> Abortions. But that's illegal, bro. Bro, trust me, bro. The producers of the film assures me that this is strictly <laughs> I know her too. based drama. <laughs> As the executive producer said, it contains facts, no fake news. <laughs> Wait a minute, I know that term. Mm. Is this an anti-abortion movie? Well, I don't know. Loeb said it looks at both mm. sides and lets the audience decide. Really? Okay, you were the finance co-chair on Giuliani's 2008 presidential run. Uh, By God. all means, make your movie, but don't bullshit me, dude. Since the Be movie, honest. The crew members have come out to say the script was kept out of the loop, but once the script became more known, many crew members, including the unit production manager, left the project, citing yes. historical inaccuracies. They or did. The producers yes. would say, they're putting the pressure on us. Who? Who is putting the pressure on us? You know, they. They who? Bro, trust me. Bro. 
it's been a while since we've had an episode like this, and I know this type of review isn't for everyone, but I urge my pro-life viewers to still stick around, because this movie is really bad. <laughs> Worth checking out out of curiosity. Yeah. At least part of it is, all great stories start out being to Chris Lemon, slowly becoming less his dad and more Gil. <laughs> Let's get this interview started. So when you take them out, uh, you don't see anything? Yeah, wait, I'm watching Roe v. Wade and not a porn, right? <laughs> is Chris reacting off of Loeb's, um, acting? No, you don't see anything. Christ, this guy made himself the lead. We're screwed. The movie has a good answer for how we got abortion rights, which is, eh, it was the 70s. So you have to understand, it was the 70s. The women's liberation movement was exploding. In the 70s, the chicks were out of control. We lost 10,000. <laughs> Wait till the 2010s. Oh my streets. god. Christ, this is like a zombie horror film complete with sinister music. And you know how it's worrisome whenever you see a lot of executive producer credits? This is a real credit from the film. Whoa, this is the 19 and counting of executive producers. <laughs> oh, there's more, by the way. They couldn't fit these names on you the Donate screen. enough money, or put your they name in it. I would know. <laughs> as the Catholic League for Religious and Civil Rights. In case you're wondering where the movie will fall on the abortion debate, but it is based on a true story, therefore you have to like it. Well, the movie could take some time to build its characters. Screw that. Let the narrator come in. That's Ruth, my first love. See, my family was Jewish, so I tried to get them to warm up to her. See, why focus on the characters when we can have chess metaphors? You don't need the queen to win the game. Yeah, you don't Fuck them uh, bitches, yeah, man. Star in your movie either. Oh, it gets worse, and I'm not talking about his girlfriend being pregnant. <laughs> Maybe we can get married? You do know I love you, right? I can't take care of a baby right now. Well, that's what you want. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hollywood's real scared of this movie. <laughs> Times were different back then. To get an abortion, you had to put them in a cab and drive around the block really fast. Mm. Oh, she's dead by the Efficient. Way. That's why he becomes a doctor, to make sure no one dies from an abortion again. They literally call it their master plan. And they bring in the top feminist even feminist on the case. <laughs> and Jamie Kennedy, as they were all founder From of their Son of the Mass. Sure, we could find out more about him, but let's become and a from Ghost of Susan Spur. movie for 30 seconds, where we see Planned Parenthood's Margaret Sanger speaking to the Klan. They've since regretted the speaking event. <laughs> Though in this movie's logic, Planned Parenthood is the Klan. I hope it also denounces psychiatry. Hail Hitler, apparently. Oh, seriously, what? And this is hardly the truth. We all know Jamie Kennedy founded NARAL to stop Son of the Mass from happening. Anyway, I guess they're wanting to open a clinic or something. A bunch of disorganized men are going to rid this country of abortion restriction? No, 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 we're not disorganized, okay? I don't know, this movie is very disorganized. This is the Gotti of abortion movies. <laughs> Horrible movie in its own right. our movement. As they walk through some extras in a hotel lobby, they gave signs to. I say we go for abortion on demand. Follow me to the penthouse, ladies. Abortions for all. Oh, and I guess this is Bernard's wife. Can't you tell they're married? You can't make a joke. What you do isn't funny. I don't understand. A woman doesn't support women's rights? They only speak in Twitter or it's the only thing they have in common. It's so Twitter wasn't even a thing back then. I just miss you. Okay, you win. <laughs> Can you feel this oh, home again? Serious, that doesn't get you in the mood. Shoot Here's a senator reading from the diary of the unborn. But what I want more than anything is to see my mommy. The senator, oh. you just win. Why don't you go lie down for a while? And if mommy killed you, who wrote that diary? I'm sensing a plot hole in your <laughs> speech. I think in this story needs a dash of Stacy Dash. When he's trying From to cool us. Oh yeah. To graduate Harvard Medical. They want her to help start the National Right 
to Life Committee in the most subtle way possible. I am still completing my residency at Boston University. We never heard Rose Parks make excuses. No pressure. You'll mm -hmm. even follow her into the subway like he's the New York Ripper. What's it like to overhear this conversation? First, we came after the Jews. Mm -hmm. But we weren't Jewish. So we didn't say anything. Interesting appetizer. What's the entree? Mm -hmm. This is a kid that's late for me. <laughs> if this were after 2001, a 9-11 reference would have been the dessert. Lecture of black woman on rest. slavery. Oh, oh my God. God. Is in this, isn't he? Yes. Yes, he is. He's an attorney and Joey from Melissa and Joey. Oh, uh, yeah. Abortion before Why are there so many big names here? Or the U.S. The U.S. Hansen's clinics are performing a thousand abortions per week. It sounds more like an abortionist than a doctor. That number sounds like something you pulled out of your ass. This movie is 100% exposition dialogue to a cartoonish extent. Sounds more like an abortionist. You mean a doctor performs Thanks. medical procedures? When the exposition isn't in the dialogue. <laughs> now, Larry's strategy was to always vilify the Catholics. This is like watching a movie with someone who keeps pausing it to give you information that you didn't ask for. That's <laughs> what the review is for. And for something else you didn't ask for, a commercial break. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> I miss those commercials are good. Yeah. Oh, you're back. Why in case you missed the scene where they tell us to take God out of the oh. courtroom argument, here's another scene of them talking about taking God out of their courtroom argument. As a physician, they know this. As a physician, I know this. Yes, but give me something I can write on Twitter. <laughs> you know, it's cheaper to abort a baby than it is to keep it on. Mm, yes, and it's cheaper to live on the street than it is to buy a house. Hmm. Good point. Interesting. I'd rather see this asinine dialogue, though, than watch these two act like a couple. He looks like he'd be more comfortable doing an actual abortion than touching her. <laughs> That's what the next sequence is. Abortion montage. Live montage. And include this hilarious cutaway of the clock skipping ahead. Hurry it up now. We've got a thousand more to do today. And get us that chain row for this the court case. This is so demeaning. We found a girl in Texas. What would you have done if that didn't land on Texas? Would you have started <laughs> over until you hit it? Never mind. They found the perfect Jane Rowe. <laughs> she became an alcoholic, a drug addict, a lesbian. She has a criminal record and a ninth grade education. Wait, just so we're clear. We so oh, she's a dumb, drunk dyke, apparently. Bat pussy. Bored. This movie is an hour and 50 minutes of over-explaining. Calling Norma Jane Rowe made sure our opponents would never be able to find out who she was. Thanks. Now I know what pseudonyms are. How are they going to win these cases, though? Bro, we've got the media on our side, bro. Okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's the movie that should be pausing. Uh, well, what did I really care? I mean, although my parents were Jewish, I was more of an atheist. Stop doing that. That tidbit factors into nothing. Now, here's Norma McCorvey, who they convinced to be their chain row, while cutting to horror film abortion footage for some reason. Mixed in with us. Of course. So, what happens during an abortion? Does the baby go back? Like, when John Wayne aborts a mission? <laughs> this is not real. I love how yep, it keeps it pausing is. for Loeb to tell us the lies that they're telling, yet something tells me it's going to leave out the information that Norma was paying to speak out against abortion. One of my favorite scenes, though, is when the case doesn't go to court in time before she mm -hmm. has her baby, like it's the Twilight Zone. They lied to me! They told me we would have fought right now! You just now figured that out? <laughs> Wade is pissed, though, as he acts like he's a carpet salesman in a sitcom. No judge or jury in their right mind would ever let abortion happen in Texas. That's why they won't have it happen now. This Texas case should be called, as an insert occupation here, versus, so what you're saying... So you're saying that if Texas were to approve abortion, 
that it would be considered a direct killing. Objection, Your Honor. This direct should killing. This be classified as a screenplay. Tragedy strikes. They even make the female judge sound so uneducated. Are you kidding me? On the way to the set. I would like to draw the court's attention that life is an ongoing process. Ugh, this high school production of Roe v. Wade really sucks. Sorry, I'm speaking over the courtroom drama applause lines. These girls should not be put through the pregnancy and should be entitled to an abortion. You didn't tell me this was going to be a courtroom full of commies. Will you appeal to the Supreme Court? I will appeal this all the way to the Supreme Court, so help me God. Thanks. That is too real. script generator. <laughs> this case is so important, the big guns of acting are here. Like John Voight as Chief Justice Warren Berger. You weren't coming home at midnight, cowboy dude. What are you doing in this over-exposition mess? The Supreme Court has... Lines up with his own personal policy. Two had just retired. These pauses are Nick Loeb giving us information that everyone knows, but he just found out, and it's blowing his mind. I'm surprised it's taken this long for the film to become a straw man classroom film. Only fanatics are against abortion. Mother Teresa, Martin Luther King, Dalai Lama. Yeah, but I think people with beards are weirdos. Mm. Yeah, was Santa Claus a weirdo? Mm -hmm. Any other straw man argument? You won't protest the killing in Vietnam. So am I confused, or is this just hypocrisy? And in case you missed Not the same thing. thing. The first time, the and I hate China. their faces. They're yeah, like, oh, the oh yeah, good point. The Nazis used to do it to the Jews. We're not even no. <laughs> There's been two Holocaust comparisons. But all you need to and know slavery. is that if you're pro-choice, you would have killed Beethoven. Because every pro-choice person wants to kill the disabled. I wouldn't want my child to grow up disabled and suffer. You would have killed Beethoven. Yeah, okay. Bill and Ted would never let that happen. This movie is so bad with its thousands of characters, it has to remind us of our lead's backstory. Before they need to limit his abortions, because this medical board is run by no good bullies. The sneers and the nicknames. This isn't high school. You can't hurt me. Then why is your underwear over your head, bro? <laughs> <laughs> it's about to be. Bernard has a plan, though. Fight the medical board by riling up the movie's audience who hate the media. So I had Larry call and leak the story to the press and feed some of this good raw meat to the truly beasts in the media. So, this is a movie. It's a bumper sticker. The quota on abortions is lifted right away. What a plot point. This movie spends more time talking about cornflakes. Get ready for what's coming. Oh. Eating cornflakes is an anti aphrodisiac Okay, it's not that Jamie Kennedy is bad in the movie. It just feels like I'm watching a comedy sketch whenever he's on screen. Case in point, I promised you a sing-along, right? There's a fortune in abortion. Is there a gold mine in the sex line? A gold mine in the sex line. <laughs> Please, continue. Only rabbits have a tabbit. <gasps> this could have all 100% happened. That doesn't make this a good movie. <laughs> Just like how it's sometimes yeah. against exaggerations. A million illegal abortions a year, 10,000 die in back alleys. I completely made that up. Oh, now it's against pulling members out of its ass? Uh, Hell, this is a scene where the term pro-choice is created while Larry is checking out a woman's ass. Look at the best place. ideas come from that. This can be used to make pillows, because here's an unsurprising cameo. Over one million women are having illegal abortions every year in America. Wait a minute, the producers told me this wouldn't contain fake news. Between Unplanned and Roe v. Wade, Mike Lindell is like the Stan Lee cameo of abortion films. The My Pillow it's Guy. Oh. Something about going to court, <laughs> which is just what our characters are preparing for. While the pro life people are monitoring babies, the pro choice people are getting so laid. Remember, this is the 70s when the Supreme Court was made up of every character actor on their Rolodex. William Forsythe? Robert Davi, Corbin Burns.
Robertson, Richard Portnow? You guys are better than this. <laughs> alright, alright. Let the ladies do their pro-choice thing. We all know this case is gonna come down to chicks, bro. When a man argues against two beautiful ladies, they're gonna have the last word. Movie, please. You're best when you're trying not to be funny. <laughs> okay, back to my question. Can females become president? Did you watch the PSA, son? Cut to a commercial! Are you still laughing when I'm president? To be bad president? <laughs> Everyone knows the president can't be as good as he is a female. Can too. Yes, he is. Can not. Yeah. He is. Oh gosh, he's right. The Constitution says that any natural born citizen over the age of 35 can be. I'm just kind of striking by the fact that the pigs are pretty much naked below the waist. I know. Oh, they're completely naked. <laughs> Welcome back, people. Let's continue on with the pregnant females movie. So what procedure would you suggest for a pregnant female in the state of Texas? Yeah, this feels like they're presenting their case to a panel of Star Wars villains. And when it doesn't go their way, I'm sure they'll take it well. We should have been debated in Congress, not here. Uh, it's not fair. Why didn't I get any ice cream before bedtime? It's a conspiracy! <laughs> no trial, no expert witnesses, no description of evidence, no expert witness testimony. This guy no sucks. Witness. Yeah. Our movie heroes are conspiracy theorists. Okay. No, no, don't put your hands up to vote. Loeb needs to hold our hands through telling us what the vote is. The four justices on the right with their hands up voted to legalize abortion, while the three on the left were supporting life. This is like a dumb guy trying to do an Adam McKay movie, but using cutaways to describe something as simple as tying your shoes. It's not quite this Even the simple, language. Though, as Berger these people are voting for abortion, the these people are supporting life. The we'll language is so biased. Abortion. Totally. Because this movie does not uh, leave it up to the viewer to decide. No, no, yeah, it does not. Scenes, it's just a collection of these character actors coming together to give each other shit. Wait a minute, even John Schneider is there too? How did he get confirmed with his moon running pass? Dukes of Hazard! Secret meetings like it's all the president's men, where they complain about Berger's abuse of power. But unfortunately, all this letter says is... Burger. There's even scenes where they're strong arming their fellow justices into siding with the pro choice movement, or this copy of Frozen Assets will get leaked to the press. Also, everyone has ties to Planned Parenthood. I wish you wouldn't spend so much time in that place. That place? Planned Parenthood? You don't want to supporting women. The irony of a courtroom movie using nothing but bad faith arguments. I think it's hilarious Justice Stewart is being picked Watch up this. in the car I would have gotten high in in college. The driver is Roger Stone. Yeah! Has the wife. This movie is worried about conflicts of interest while also talking to a man with a Nixon tattoo. There's so many pauses in this film that when a character just stops to contemplate something, I thought the movie paused and Loeb was going to tell us that Bernson needs glasses to see better. Enough with that Supreme Court show. Hard to believe he was the dad on psych. With oh my gosh. women from Texas to cross the border to Mexico with the approval of Playboy. I mean, it's kind of hypocritical <laughs> that we exploited women for women's rights. Oh, yeah, sure. Because you don't look at dirty magazines or porn. Just when they're not hanging out on green screen beach, everyone wants to bang them with these credentials. Oh my god, that's sick. And how to do that? We control the media. Very yeah. open about it. I think they've hit about every bumper sticker I see on the drive to my grandma's house. Now they're getting <laughs> laid with numbers. Well, 2,000 women died from back alley abortions. <laughs> what? <laughs> we made that up too. Surprise, they're still in business. I know. That died from back alley abortions? <laughs> That's okay. I'm shocked these two could keep so many secrets, because apparently they tell everybody. And forgive me for not crying foul about exaggerations in a movie that trivializes slavery and the Holocaust. And that does 
doesn't even cover the section about emergency abortion rabbis. What do I tell my husband? Oh, jeez. Why, you bet? You're not the husband? Conservative commentary. Oh, wow. choices. When we 
Milo Yiannopoulos is in this movie. Oh gosh. Some more sing-alongs. Now we're back to the courtroom scenes that were probably filmed in a day. Hence why we still couldn't properly fix that damn wig. Your Honor, we'd like to consider this a mistrial due to Justice Blackman's daughter's connections to being Tommy Laren. Yep, that is Tommy Laren. Characters we're supposed to root for are the most condescending pricks. You're already going to be balancing the interests of the mother against the interests of the fetus. Can we try that again, but more smug? And if that doesn't work, more tears and more monologuing. This is a minority. A silent minority. I don't know if you're gonna get an Oscar for this, but continue. Who's thinking for these children? Who's counsel for these children? These unborn children? You're dreaming about eating. <laughs> I hope that these same people all gather 20 years later to await the results of the O.G. Simpson trial. So abortion is legal now. I am shocked by this. Mainly, I'm shocked that the movie still has 20 minutes left, and a majority of it is them complaining about the decision. If you found out today that you were pregnant, and I killed you, should I go to jail for murdering one person or two? God. Damn! Yes, sir, this is culinary arts. What kind of school is this? <laughs> I'm sure it's easy to get an A here. All you have to do is humor Joey Lawrence and look at him all confused. The trees should be granted personal. that rivers, lakes, and even pupfish have rights. What? Just say, whoa, it's the only reason I took this class. Hell, he even starts arguing against the right to privacy. Do you have to make your character look... That is one freaky-looking motherfucker. He looks like the guy from Master of Guys. Semi-stalkers, like how she shows up at Bernard's work and asks how he lives with himself. Keep in mind, this is the same group that dubbed him The Scraper, because, you know, they're totally not dog-whistling violence against people in his field. And nothing that came before this has ever made me want to see Nick Lowe monologuing. Are you tired of creating new souls? You don't have the acting capability for this. Oh, no, that's horrific. To bad lieutenant. I kill babies. I kill babies in the name of saving women. And I kill babies because they were unwanted? Please, say kill babies again. Because, you know, this movie is a fair look at both sides. <laughs> It pretty much turns into the movie Unplanned again, where seeing a baby on a sonogram makes him change his views on abortion. Because I totally want to see Nick Loeb attempt to cry, too. <laughs> Good fucking God! I could do better with zero training. This were a Neil Breen film. I guess we're all caught up because it shows us the opening scene again, only with inserting graphic shots of fetuses and graphic shots of Nick Loeb. Plus, he's no longer an atheist and has turned to God. Because if you are for abortion, then you hate God and you're racist. That's how they're finishing. Well have a catch. Yeah. Stop. The movie with those stats. Yeah. In abortion. This isn't me replaying the clip, by the way. Not only does it play the sing-along again, but they give us handy lyrics while promoting the Bernard Nathanson book. Plus, why not show the Margaret Sanger scene again, as if it's documentary footage? So, am I supposed to listen to her or not? Because last time you mentioned her, it was because you were implying she was on your side. And yes, it does leave out Norma's deathbed confession about anti-abortion groups and her confession that that's not Ted Koppel. <laughs> this movie is over and it still comes in with narration to tell us how the justices voted and to promote Bernard's documentary, The Silent Scream, which it reenacts. Are you sure it's officially over? Does Nick want to come in and tell us what ending credits are? <laughs> okay, so clearly I have different opinion on this topic than the makers of this film, which makes it very easy for me to come in all snarky and to 
scoff at the movie. But just a twist of the wrist and you're through. Ooh, the movie really is that bad. Look, this is a confirmation bias film. It's a movie that is simply made just for you to agree with it. It's not interested in acting. It's not interested in dialogue or storytelling or nuance. It is just straw man arguments and gotcha insults for its audience to think that it's good just because it's also against abortion. Saying that this is a good movie because, hey, a lot of it really happened. It's like saying Wired's a good movie because John Belushi really did exist. It's a deeply cynical film with zero standards where its heroes come across like obsessed psychopaths and its villains so shippy-eyed it makes it a propaganda film so bottom of the barrel that it's even worse than unplanned or voiceless because at least those had some kind of focus. Oh. Needless to say, it's <laughs> not exactly a Look at that. Film. I've never seen so zero percent. And yet, the audience gave it a 54. On their worst of 2020 list because it was just a rough cut. Something tells me that for the worst of 2021 list, yeah, it'll be on there. When did this come out? Brad got sent because he's part of some critics program. Yeah. He got sent a screener for this movie a full year before it even came out. Okay. The movie didn't come out till April 2nd, 2021, a year ago. It just came I think it was actually filmed like in 2018, and they just sat on it for a while. But yeah, Roe v. Wade, 2021. I'd say this is actually more upsetting than the overturning. I think it actually might be. Because holy shit, like... I know. Even if you're pro-life, I don't think you can deny this is not a well-made film. It's just not. There's no point. Also, Nick Loeb, like, literally grinds my gears. His acting is horrific. It's so bad. Yeah, yeah, and, uh... He was in a relationship with Sofia Vergara, the mom from Modern Family. What? They broke up, and I when she was with Joan. This is before that. Oh. When they were together, they had um, embryos frozen, you know, in case they wanted to have kids. After they broke up, he sued to try and get ownership of those embryos. So I, yeah, it's clear where he stands on this whole thing. Oh, that is so. This is just so upsetting, and I, I truly, I had forgotten when this movie was released, or when even Brad made this review, and so when you just reminded me that it was so recent, that is yeah. so terrifying. Yeah, and um, here's another crazy thing. You don't mention, you didn't mention her. Like, Niccolo, he directed and wrote this movie, mm -hmm. but it had a second director and writer. Oh. Um, the second director and writer was actually a woman named, uh, let's see here, uh, Kathy Allen, oh. and I couldn't, I, I tried looking her up, I couldn't find much about her. Mm -hmm. This is the last movie, as of now, that she's helped make. Her other credits are mostly horror films, which probably are more appealing yeah. than this fucking movie. I mean, this one was kind of a horror movie. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to watch this with you because I'm like, if there's a time to have a female perspective, it's on this, especially with what's going on. Absolutely. So, does this movie offend you in any way? Does it offend me? How do I answer this? Um, in every way humanly possible? Yeah. Um, it was... It was horrible. It is hard to watch. The only thing that made it better was Brad's commentary making, totally. reminding me that I can have faith in humanity. Um, this was just... The fact, again, you were saying, the fact that he, they made this film out to be a neutral, a neutral film was just... How, how does one even say that? After Bullshit. all of it. Just be honest. Just be honest. Like, you're simply not neutral in the slightest, and you did not make a neutral film. And the other stuff, the, I guess, 
I don't like using this word, but yeah. problematic stuff, mm -hmm. like the rabbi scene. <laughs> and it makes, it, it, sorry, go. I'm kind of surprised they didn't go the extra mile and have him say, you didn't want to be pregnant, you should have closed your legs, you shishka. Literally. And it was just, the way that they treated abortion as just so casual, like as if people who are pro-choice also treat abortion as just this super casual thing is an issue that's still going on today. I mean, nobody thinks of abortion as something easy to do. That's not, nobody, nobody thinks of it like that. It is a traumatic experience for every woman and they grieve from it and they, they have to heal from that. It is not an option that anybody wants to choose ever, but it's an option. Because we are living human beings and we should come first before a fetus that hasn't even entered into the world yet. I agree. And I have an edgy uh, a joke here. Let's hear it. To hear it. Oh, of course I would. And maybe it's because I'm drunk, but uh, I'm for abortion. The planet's got enough people as it is. <laughs> Hell. Every time there's a mass shooting, I'm like, less assholes in the world. <laughs> I mean, Classic edgy jig. There could be a nihilistic argument that Sandy Hook and Park Lane were blessings in disguise. Oh my goodness. I, <laughs> I don't even know where to go after that. That was fucked up. <laughs> Think that'll get me canceled? <laughs> Maybe a little bit, but honestly, we need the edginess, Jake. We need it. Um, and uh, the film, Brad mentions it, but the way they treat that um, black woman played by Stacey Dash. Yeah. Yeah, like, it's akin to slavery. Like, she wouldn't fucking know. I know. And I love her first line that he highlights. I was the first Negro doctor to graduate. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> I, like, could they be more tone deaf? I don't think so. And, uh, in the comments for this video, mm -hmm. um, someone pointed out, like, that scene where Jelly Lawrence mm -hmm. is talking to the class, mm -hmm. and he says, you would abort Beethoven. Someone pointed out, that scene is so fucking retarded, because, one, Beethoven was not born deaf. That came later in his yeah. like young life. So yeah, these cunts don't even do their fucking research. Lit not at all. They put zero thought into this. Their thought, again, confirmation bias, Brad said it best. This was a movie that they wanted to show to all their friends who were going to agree with it. And anybody who is going to speak out negatively against it, they're like, well, fuck you. You guys are all sinners anyways. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Mike Lindell, the My Pill guy. Oh my god, what the fuck was that, Jake? You, are you familiar with him? Yes, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> As Brad pointed out, he previously appeared in a other anti-abortion film called Unplanned. And it's notable for, it was put out by the Christian film company mm -hmm. Pure Flix. It's notable for being the first R-rated Pure Flix movie because of the graphic abortions. No, of course that's why. And uh, Brad comments that Bernard Nathanson, the film promotes his documentary, The Silent Scream. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen it. And? And uh, it is a bit grisly because they show aborted fetuses. And, but, for the most part, I found it kind of boring. Like, I just watched it so I could understand mm -hmm. it. But, like, Nick, like Bernard Nathanson, he comes off as a guy who believes he's smarter than everybody else. Yeah. And I honestly could see someone who is not educated on abortion, who's easy to, like, talk into stuff. Yeah. I could see how this could uh, influence somebody. Definitely. Like, for example, I looked it up on IMDb. There's like 10 reviews. Eight of them are 10 star reviews or something uh, saying how it saved lives. That's horrifying.
work on, uh, I don't, you know what to me is also boring, is this emotional appeal, exactly like what you're saying is, this classic, we're going to go to, you know, you know, we're going to appeal to the emotional side of people, show them aborted fetuses, or talk about how it's killing children, how we're speaking up for dead children, that's like, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing that your only argument is going to be trying to terrify and traumatize people in order to get them on your side. Like, do you really not have any more fully developed intellectual thoughts to sway people? Playing on emotions is the best way to manipulate people. And, by the way, the medical community has called out Silent Scream for being misleading and inaccurate. Mm -hmm. Like, if you don't know anything about abortion or pregnancy, yeah, this could manipulate you. Okay. Or if you're, a, if you're from a religious background. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, this movie, it looks like a piece of shit. And unless I'm going to review it someday with my trusty friend Jameson, <laughs> I don't think I'm going to watch it. I don't want to give any fame or any money or any viewership to this film. No thank you. Aside from what we're doing now. Exactly. Well, we're helping out Brad. We're not really helping out the film, right? Yeah. And, uh, I hope I am not too fucking obnoxious, because I, being half Asian, this, uh, really puts the red in my yellow face. <laughs> It's okay, you got one sober reactor and one drunk reactor. It's yeah. what everyone wants. Evens out, baby. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, Nick Loeb. Go to hell. Yeah. Just like all of us sinners who are pro-choice. <laughs> and, uh, so many good actors. How do they end up here? Um, I know, paychecks. And I repeat, <laughs> Steve Gutenberg, where are you? <laughs> And I know it's a, right now it's a scary time mm -hmm. with the overturning of Roe v. Wade. Mm -hmm. And I don't have much to offer other than a little cookie, fortune cookie uh, dialogue. Mm -hmm. Just because something has been knocked down doesn't mean it can't be rebuilt. Great. I like that quote a lot and I think it perfectly exemplifies what we're all going to have to work towards now. Rebuilding. And we will do it. Hopefully. And uh, that's all I have to say. You have anything else? No, I think this film speaks for itself. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed our reaction. Hope uh, I can stay awake for the next one we film. And see you again soon. Bye, guys.